Every community in the Delaware Valley contributed to the suppression of the rebellion. The quiet crossroads at Pleasant Hill in northern Delaware was no exception. In reviewing the census records and the old maps for a 200-acre area at and around the former Pleasant Hill Post Office, we quickly found connections to six Civil War soldiers. These are their stories. Though much of it has been destroyed by modern subdivisions, Traces of the 19th century can still be found in northern Delaware. The creeks and small streams are still following their historic courses, and the road network is largely unchanged after 150 years. In the valley and surrounding hills drained by Middle Run are traces of 19th century life connected to six veterans of the Civil War. We begin here at, at a busy intersection below Corner Catch. In this now empty woods once stood the home of the Buckingham family. Three members of this household would see service during the war. David Buckingham, the oldest brother, would serve as a lieutenant in Company E of the 4th Delaware Infantry. At the Battle of Hatcher's Run on February 5, 1865, he would win the Congressional Medal of Honor. He would swim across a frozen Virginia Creek under fire to capture a river crossing. In 1864, he would apply for a furlough to see his sick father, coming home to this site for about two weeks. Richard Buckingham would begin his service as a sergeant in Company E, serving under his brother David. He received a furlough in October of 1863 when he was sick with typhoid fever. In June of 1864, he would be promoted to sergeant major of the regiment. He would be wounded by a gunshot to the left ankle in the closing days of the war and would come home. He would spend the rest of his life farming in Mill Creek 100, dying in 1939 at the age of 97. Albin Buckingham would enlist in the 7th Delaware for 30 days in July of 1864. While a small rebel army raided Maryland, his regiment would guard Baltimore and the PWB Railroad. He would spend the rest of his life at Pleasant Hill farming the fields and serving as postmaster. He died in 1926 at the age of 82. Very little remains of the Buckingham home today. A few odd stones and a slight depression in the ground show the size of the house. Bits of broken glass and rusted metal just below the surface are all that remain of this historic site. Within a short distance of the post office was a site associated with three more Civil War veterans. Thomas Moore was a prominent man in Mill Creek 100 in the 1860s. Living near him and working in his shop were three apprentices who would ultimately serve in the war. Joseph Chambers enlisted with his Buckingham neighbors and would be a member of Company E of the 4th Delaware. He would be wounded in the hand in June of 1864. When his friend Richard Buckingham was promoted to sergeant major, Chambers became the first sergeant of the company. After the war, he would remain in Mill Creek 100 working as a blacksmith. He would die in 1908 at the age of 66. Of the six men, only one would die in the service. Mansell Moore was living with his uncle in 1860 and working as a wheelwright apprentice. Perhaps with friends in nearby Cecil County, Maryland, he enlisted in the 6th Maryland Infantry, Company B. After a year's service, he was a cripple and unable to perform duty with his company. He was detailed to the commissary department and, in a railroad accident, suffered a fractured thigh. He died on the 30th of December. These ruins are the remains of Thomas Moore's extens extensive shops located here. Joseph Chambers and Mansell Moore both learned valuable trades here. Chambers was able to support a family for several decades using the skills learned under Thomas Moore. Mansell Moore, had he survived the war, would have likely been a successful wheelwright after his military service. If we examine this area with a metal detector, there is no doubt that we could uncover 
some pieces from the lives of Joseph Chambers Manta Moore. The final Civil War veteran we have traced to this tract of ground is Theodore Crossan. His father worked on the Moore farm and likely lived on the property. Unfortunately, the house site was not marked on the maps and we have yet to see the remains of a small house where we could expect to find it. Crossan enlisted at the age of 16 in Company E of the 4th Delaware along with several neighbors. He deserted in November of 1862, but returned in April of 1864 just in time for the first real combat of the regiment. After the war, he would work as a farm laborer in Chester County, Pennsylvania. He would go on to work as a fireman and then as an engineer for the railroad. He would die at the age of 55 in 1901. All of these young men and their neighbors in the small community left traces of their lives behind in the soil. Mill Creek 100 is an area that contributed to our national history in many unexplored ways. We hope to do many future presentations on this area. Thank you for watching. This presentation was brought to you by the Delaware River Blues, the finest living history organization in the Delaware Valley. If you have an area you'd like us to cover in a future presentation, please comment below. As always, like and subscribe. Thank you.